Welcome to the Conversations with Jesus podcast. I'm Johnny Lehman, a baptized man of God who has the amazing blessings of being a husband, father, and the pastor at Divine Savior Church in West Palm Beach, Florida. This podcast is designed to bring you the self-sacrificing love of Jesus found in the Bible through 15 to 20 minute episodes that focus on relevant life issues and what God has to say about them. Check out our website, DivineSaviorChurch.com, as well as our Facebook and Instagram pages if you'd like to find out more about the incredible things that God is doing through our church family. Everyone likes a guarantee. It makes us feel safe. Hesitation in the gray zone of what if causes doubt, worry, and fear. We prefer confirmation, a stamp of approval, and the proven process that gives Confidence, sense of security, and builds excitement for what's to come. Well, this week, as we continue our path through the book of Proverbs, we're going to see how God's path of wisdom gives us the confidence we're looking for because it's different than every other pursuit of wisdom. So this week in the series, we're going to learn what that difference is, why it's important, and how it makes it easy to pursue wisdom God's way. I cannot wait to unpack more incredible truths from the book of Proverbs with you. A reading from Assorted Proverbs. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Through love and faithfulness, sin is atoned for. Through the fear of the Lord, evil is avoided. Fear of the Lord leads to life. Then one rests content, untouched by trouble. Who can say, I have kept my heart pure? I am clean and without sin. Do not let your heart envy sinners, but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. There is surely a future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. Blessed is the one who always trembles before God, but whoever hardens their heart falls into trouble. This is God's Word. What is your greatest fear? It's not a question we like to answer. In fact, when I asked this question to a couple of members this week, they kind of gave me a look of horror. (laughs) Why is that? Why, Why do we not talk about our greatest fears? Why is it not something we bring up on a first date? It's interesting. Because clearly our fears, if we talk about them, they reveal something about ourselves. So we don't mind talking about what we love most, but when it comes to what we fear, we're afraid to talk about it. Now, why do you think that is? The vulnerability, feeling of being out of control, or hope? Often what our deepest fears show us is a glimpse of what we are functionally putting our hope in. Now, you know as well as I do, we live in a world searching for hope. There was a comprehensive study done recently by Chapman University on the overall fear and anxiety of Americans today, and they found that somewhere between 60 and 85 percent of adult Americans live with a sense of impending doom, is how they phrased it. Fear of someone dying, fear of death personally, fear of the future. This is the reality we are in today. So what will make the difference between living wisely in hopeful, hopeful, joy-filled fear, or living in anxious fear, like most in our world today. Remember, we live in God's reality, that the Lord is in control of all human history, perfectly, wisely preparing everything for the final day of recreation when Jesus will come back in all his glory, take you and me and his family home. We know what wisdom is. It's grace-given competency to face life's complexity, but how does this help us in facing our fears? How do we live differently as Christians to live in grace instead of fear and what ifs? It all starts with Proverbs 9 verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Now to be clear, when the Bible speaks of fearing the Lord, it's not Find the nearest closet and avoid him. It's not that kind of a fear. It's being awestruck 
by who God is and what he's done. To mentally marvel at his love for us, his power, his wisdom, his infinity. To fear the Lord is to know the Lord. As Christians, we pray to God, it's not just a therapeutic self-talk meditation. You are talking to the one who loves you more than any other. The one who holds all things in his hands. The Christian difference is staring at the cross, tears of joy streaming because we see grace. God's undeserved love that makes us joyfully afraid of how otherworldly our Lord is. The Christian life is not just a box you pull out on select occasions, not a part of you reserved for a church building or in private. Your connection with God encapsulates everything you do. That's the difference of grace. But so often, how do we live? We live letting fear of worldly things dictate our lives and snuff out our hope. We would never say it out loud, but is your greatest fear being exposed? Every day you wonder if this is the moment people will know you for who you really are. And so you try to keep up the facade, the face, the firmness, but you find yourself driven to hide. So many in our culture are doing just that. If identity is performance, then regret and fear can consume. You fear the thought of losing someone you love. Not just in death, but in relationships. Do you find yourself answering their texts as quickly as possible, anxious that if you mess up even one conversation, it can ruin the whole connection? Do you fear being alone? To live in existence without someone to share it with? Or someone who truly gets you and is with you? Do you fear where our country is headed? You find yourself swiping through news apps, switching through channels, and the same hopeless message continues to be broadcast. Here's what happens when our thoughts and hearts are overtaken by our fears and not the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tell us what we're inclined to do. What does it say? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And here it is. Lean not on your own understanding. Why does it tell us not to do that? Because we're so prone to do that. If we put it on ourselves, to face our fears alone, if we lean on ourselves, we will fall over. So often what, what we do in our fear then, when we realize we can't face them alone, you know what we do? We sort of make God our assistant. I can't tell you how many times I've done that in my life. When I face one of my fears, my fear of disappointing people, of not being the man, the pastor, the husband, the father God has called me to be. I look to God, not in awe-filled, joyful fear, but in, Lord, you need to bail me out. You know the ifs. If you are really here for me, Jesus, you'll take care of this. The ultimatums are so prone to put before God. Of course, you and I, we have no right to do that. What does Proverbs 20, verse 9 say? Who can say, I have kept my heart pure? I am clean and without sin. Spoiler alert, no one except one, you know him. In our sins, we truly have no business telling God what to do, but we do this over and over again. Why? So often our fears consume us, drive us, and dictate how we live in God's reality. As Christians, we're called to do what Martin Luther King Jr. once said in a sermon. We must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. And of course, only Jesus can give us such a hope. We live in fear. We play the, the exhausting what-if scenario game. We don't live in wisdom, but live afraid that one day what we have will be taken, and what we don't have will never be ours. And that's what Proverbs 23, 17 is getting at. Do not let your heart envy sinners, but instead live in the fear of the Lord always. How do we live in such a way? How can we truly know what Proverbs 23, 18 is talking about when it says, There is surely a future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. It comes down to one person. There's only one who can give you certain hope that calms all your fears, can put your mind at ease, can give you peaceful rest at night. You know him. You know his grace. And it completely rearranges your life. You can't help but live differently. Because remember, to fear the Lord is to know the Lord. Not in some abstract ideation sort of a way, but in a concrete real, every second affecting way. And what a blessing it is to know we have a concrete, flesh and blood, real, every sound, every second affecting 
Savior. You know Him. He's Jesus. He knows your fears. He knows what keeps you up at night because He chose to know you. He knew what human beings have feared more than anything else. Why do possibly 85% of Americans live in anxiety over their impending doom? It's because death is just too real. Jesus knows how much we fear it. I'm not just containing it to physical death, but the death of relationships we fear, the death of careers, of connections with our families. The list goes on. He knows how often our fears seem way more real to us than God's grace. So what did he do? He chose to become truly human. He chose to walk in the world of fear. He confronted those fears again and again, and they were the ones afraid of him. He walked through the valley of death, and not only came out on the other side, but he brought you along with him. The Lord who's bigger than the universe, who's stronger than gravity, who's more in control than the tides. Out of loving awe and reverence of his Father, what did Jesus do? He showed us how different life is when we belong to him. And guess what? Every day, Jesus continues to save you from your greatest fears. As Christians, fear doesn't consume us anymore. Because it can't even be in the same zip code as Jesus. Fear fears him. Satan fears him. Death fears him. And because you belong to him, fear fears you. And you joyfully fear Jesus. He's the main fear, the main love of your life. He rearranges all your priorities, all your thoughts, and every element of your day because you know him. You don't just know about him. You know personally the son of the living God. And you know what happens when you live with the difference of grace of that amazing wisdom? Those fears that seem so concrete and that grace that seems so abstract, it flips. Your fears, even your most terrifying ones of nightmares, are really abstractions to reality. When God encounters you through word and sacrament, your fears are aberrations. The reality of grace that's given you certain hope, pressure-free identity, and joyful purpose. All that was given to you because Jesus didn't run from fear, nor did he play the what-if game. Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane? Jesus staring down, experiencing hell in our place, sweat like blood streaming down his face. And what does he say? Not my will, but yours be done. Unconditional trust in his Father, and because we know the concrete reality of Jesus' cross and empty tomb, we unconditionally trust too. Because we know our Savior's love. Jesus looks at you through the gospel and says, drop your conditions. Let everything go. Give it all to me and you'll have joy to the full, even in suffering. His love truly casts out every other fear. His undeserved love, grace, leads us to live a life of joyful fear of the Lord. When we find ourselves worrying about tomorrow we'll bring in faith, we remember Jesus is already there. And if he's already there, we're going to be just fine. When we find ourselves nervous about exposure, remember Jesus already knows everything about us. He still chooses to love us. We don't have to prove ourselves to anyone. When we find ourselves living in regret and what ifs, we remember the Lord's Supper. The reality of Jesus' body and blood, the forgiveness there, giving us not what if, but this is most certainly true. God loves me and He loves you. We rearrange our calendars, our thought processes, and our priorities because fear doesn't dictate us anymore. We live as God's workmanship, designed to do what He will lead us to to do and empower us to do. Our faith is no longer a box, tucked away for select moments, but it's who we are unapologetically. As much as we will stand out like a sore thumb, especially in our context of Divine Savior in Palm Beach County, where more than two-thirds of people are not Christians, We don't think twice about it. We live differently. Because we have a God who has given us a different kind of life. Unlike anything in the world. His love is seen no more clearly than our rescuer Jesus. Who gives us hope even in the bleakest of moments. We don't fear impending doom. We await the joy that is to come. I got to see that joy in one of our members, a sister in Christ. Her name is Eleanor Schiavone. This past week, in fact, I've, I've seen it in her ever since I first walked through her door and saw her husband Rocco smile that now Jesus is seeing face to face. These two incredible people have been married for decades. 
the last time I got to see Rocco this side of heaven last week, Eleanor pulled me aside and said, you know, Pastor, I don't know how I'd get through this if not for the Lord. She knew then, and she knows now, no fear, no loss, no pain is bigger than Him, and she knows the hope we all have as Christians. That death is not the end for us. Not for Rocco, not for you. There are no what-ifs about it. And it's not just some nice sentiment or lovely idea. It is bedrock, concrete reality. That's the difference of grace. That's the difference of Jesus. That's the confident wisdom that God has given us. It makes us fear our God with unlimited joy and hope. Amen. God's richest blessings do live in that difference of grace that envelops you, that changes every situation you face in life, and casts out all your fears. Because you know Jesus is near. There's no room for fear. God's richest blessings do live for Him now and always. And thank you so much for joining me in this podcast and mutually encouraging each other through our prayers that our God is for us. And if God is for us, who can be against us? Can't wait to share the gospel with you again next week.